7.59, good morning. It's January 8th. This is Vince Lancey with the Gold Fix. We were out yesterday, uh, took an extra day on the holiday, uh, but we're back and we're here to discuss gold and what is going on in the market or what is not going on in the market, we should say today, considering all the optimism hitting uh, the news. Excuse me while I take a sip of coffee. All right. If you're looking at the screen right now, you are looking at the OpTrader chat room. And on the left, just to let you know what you're looking at when I pull it up, uh, on the left-hand side, you're going to see uh, various uh, experts and um, team members giving uh, info and advice to subscribers, as well as uh, active discussion back and forth uh, as equals in terms of what they can do. Uh, had a question today from John Hassinger about gold, and uh, I threw a little some answers in there, but I think we should discuss that because although I'm not a technician, uh, uh, my feel is that uh, we might be toppy short term uh, and healthy corrections happen a lot in gold. I just don't want it to turn into an unhealthy correction. So what we're going to discuss today and hopefully every day hereafter is current market prices market events, any gold news that I think is significant, market analysis, what to watch out for, and any closing comments. I do want to touch on silver um, today uh, as well. Why don't I just touch on it right now? Uh, in the silver spot market, it's trading 1558. Uh, reason I cite spot in silver is because that's where the physical buying was uh, most notable on the way down when the market had a big pause at 1530. Uh, it was because of that. I'll put the chart up for that in a minute. Uh, on the left-hand side, you'll see uh, a Twitter account, which is primarily news headlines, as well as some economist comments with the occasional wise guy statement put in there. We can close that for now. All right. All right. Um, why don't we go with where gold is at the moment? All right. Okay. Gold is lower. And... On a cash basis, gold is trading 1282.20. The difference between gold futures and gold spot is negligible at this point because Fed futures are going converging towards spot. April will become the active contract very soon, and that will be determined by uh, the amount of open interest. As hedge funds and, and people who play, they want to play in a market that's increasing in liquidity, not decreasing liquidity. Uh, why don't we just go through the pricing today? All right, so this is the hourly market, this is the hourly chart. We did have, uh, I put an alert out uh, on Twitter as well as in the subscription room uh, that uh, a couple of days ago, uh, if the market had broken, let me put a little indicator up here so you can see where that came from. Since this is, okay, since this is, there you go. All right. Uh, I had a signal, uh, although I did not participate, uh, I had a signal to sell below uh, below 1285 in spots, so about 1288. And uh, that was a VBS signal. And it said we would get down to 1276. That would be the target. And uh, we got to 1278. Uh, and it didn't stay there long, uh, which was pleasantly surprising for our macro position but, and i'm glad for once i didn't short it because i probably would have had a level to buy at 76 and not have covered market turned on a dime which is odd for gold to have uh such buying uh such v-shaped bottoms and proceed to trade back up into this range another high was made you'll notice it's a lower high this is an hourly chart and since then we've come off now uh why don't we just put a couple, uh, put some lines up here so you can see what we're looking at or what is important to us. All right. Now, this, these lines, I want you to remember this if you can. This blue line here, which goes way back and something I drew as a, if you remember correctly, we were trading a couple days we were trading probably the day before New Year's, and I had drawn a line <clears throat> connecting here, and I liked it. Uh, we were about right around here when I drew it. I drew a line here connecting. 
And I liked it because it acted as support with little, with some violations. And I don't mind violations. Uh, violation, here it is, there's the beginning. So I uh, connected this line, this point to that point. Those are my origin points. Actually, this was my original origin point, but it kind of got sloughed around a little bit. So you can ignore the yellow lines. The hourly chart, and this is, you know, I'm not a technician, but this is why uh, lines matter, especially to a guy like Michael Moore. When the market dipped here and went above here, I said, okay, maybe there's something going on in this channel. So I drew a line connecting this to this and subsequently connected to that. So what this is what we found. We found support, the violation. This support was already there. I didn't, I didn't predict that. Uh, the market went up, back through it pretty quick, aggressively, aggressively through, down, aggressively through, up. Market went back up. These yellow lines, call them coincidences, but uh, they, they kind of matter a little bit for congestion. Uh, we went up, we went down, and now we're violating it again, but less violently. Right, so that should be a sign that something's weakening about the line. Uh, I didn't look at it that way. I just looked at the line itself, although I didn't trade off. I don't trade off the line. I use lines, technical lines for exits, not for entrances or, or stops. That's entirely technical analysis, and I don't trade that way. We violate it again, and now it seems to be uh, uh, what I would call uh, an anchor. Uh, it goes to it. Now, for the first time, we start to see it do this. For the first time, it stops here and goes down. So that's now it's acting as resistance, goes back above, hovers around below, and now it's spending more time below the line than above the line. And then it does use this line as resistance. Now, uh, at that point, at this point, the line, uh, the word, the terminology is it's dissipated in importance. And by that, I mean, you could say, oh, I'm bullish over here. You can say, I'm bullish if we get above this line. But over here to say I'm bullish, we get above this line when the market's going this far is really kind of like either you're very macro or you're going to miss a lot of a move. So this line dissipates in importance as support. Um, some people continue to use these lines as resistance. I don't like that uh, uh, simply because I trade momentum oriented. So I want to know when the market breaks, uh, if it breaks on the VBS system, uh, if there's also a technical line there, all, all the merrier. But uh, what I would look for now is to create a trend line down or trend line up for lower lows uh, for that. But the point being here is this line uh, is a sign to me, this is an indirect answer to John Hassinger, um, member John Hassinger, who's talking about as a guy who's called the market very well for at least 30, maybe $40, uh, 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 he's asking himself, as any good trader would, uh, we've, we've topped in this 1300 area several times. Uh, it might be time. Uh, to consider reducing or getting out of position, paraphrasing him. And the answer to that is, uh, the first answer to that is as a trader, if you've asked yourself that question, period, and I'm sorry, John, I don't have you on the screen right now. Anytime a trader asks himself that question, should I? That means he should uh, in my book. And the reason for that is that's classic gut check from an intuitive perspective for a trader who's very experienced. So when a trader turns to his buddy next to him and says, what do you think? Or seems a little toppy here. I'm not sure how I feel. That's a gut check. That's his gut, in my opinion, at least it's my gut. If it's not yours, you can tell me what body part it is. That's your gut saying something's wrong. On the other hand, emotions are not how we trade. So here's how I used to check my emotions and I still do, especially with my options positions. I used to have, uh, I'm not kidding, uh, 4,000, at one time I had 4,000 straddle spreads on per month, each month going out four years. That was when I was arbitraging volatility uh, on term structure trades. But what I'm getting at here, uh, uh, now that you're sufficiently impressed with the volumes that I trade or I have traded, um, the point is this, anytime, this is for beginner, intermediate or expert trader, anytime a trader, and John knows this, I know he knows this because he knows what he's talking about. Anytime a trader says, I'm not, you know, he's long, he's made some money. He goes, I'm not, you know, it feels a little bit, what do you think I should do? He knows what he wants to do. Now, let's say you're in a room and you can't get feedback or there's no one that you trust because any good trader listens to other people's opinions, but makes their own decisions. So when a, when a trader, like someone like John, I think, you know, having not met him, but watched his trades, especially in the Aussie dollar uh, and his patience uh, with, with timeframes, I would have to say, sincerely that he already knows what he's going to do 
And any opinion he's soliciting from someone else, even someone like myself who's been in the market for 30 years and, you know, could do these broadcasts from the back of my hand without a computer, he knows that he feels a little unsettled. Now, I'm speaking for him. I shouldn't. Uh, but if I were in this position, what, how I handle that is I was taught, if you ask yourself that question, cut your position in half and then see how your stomach feels. And uh, typically what would happen for me is uh, I'd cut a position in half, um, especially if I'm taking profits, and then see how I felt. If I still felt nervous, I would either cut it in half again, depending on the size, right? Let's say you're trading 10 lots, which is not small uh, because the gold contract is a large contract. I'm long 10 lots from, let's say, John's long from, say, 12. Um, uh, well, we were bullish. For, let's say he's long from 1,200. He says he's got thirty dollars, and I'm going to give him. I'm going to give him sixty dollars. So he's long from twelve thirty. So, uh, if he had ten contracts on, if I had ten contracts on, I was in his position. I'd cut it in half immediately. How do I feel now? Do I feel like asking someone else's opinion again? Do I feel like I'm a little bit nervous still? Then I either cut it in half again, or raise my stop aggressively to trail out of it. Meaning, I let the market take me out on the balance. Meaning, uh. uh if it's going to go up, I don't want to cut myself short and have that psychology of regret because I missed a rally. On the other hand, if it goes down, I don't want to give too much more back. Or B, after cutting in half the first time, I cut it in half again. So from five to two and a half, whatever. But at that point, at that point, I think it's also prudent to have an actual target. Now, uh, targets can change. Uh, uh, I'd have a target of X. Uh, you'll hear Larry talk about this a lot. He has a target of this. But he's flexible on that target. I have a target of 1335 uh, uh, on my monthly uh, system. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to get out before then. Uh, if it starts to act squirrely at 1325, if I see the open interest do things that I don't like, if I see some things that bother me, or if I have that, hey, John, hey, you know, hey, hey, anyone, um, what do you think? If I ask myself that question, then it's time to get out of at least half. So I hope that answers John's question. And at the same time, uh, gives a little uh, wisdom for people that are have winning positions and are uh, uh, nervous about taking profits or uh, not nervous, but uh, wondering if they should or should not be taking profits. One thing that I, that, I, that I hear mentioned a lot, and I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's good advice uh, when someone says, um, no one ever went broke taking profits. That is good advice. But the corollary, the footnote to that is, Yes, if you're risking two to make one, you can go broke taking profits. Uh, uh, for me, and this applies for me, uh, I, 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 will, I will never go broke taking profits because I risk one to make two. The problem is if I start risking one to make one or risking two to make one, then uh, taking those profits in the long term is like you know giving two to one odds betting on heads or tails. Uh, so that's pretty much, uh, I've exhausted that concept but I hope I'm, everyone understands what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, let's go with uh, where we are today. I'm gonna use gold spot, all right? A little bit of a lag today. So we're on gold spot now, and let me remove all these pretty rainbows for a second. Okay, before I put the lines up that I drew before, I wanna talk about what's going on in the news and try and trail uh, the market uh, as it comes off today, as it, as it unwound, as it opened up today. And give me a second, I'll pull up my notes. We are looking at the gold market that had been rallying on potential for uh, good news uh, out of trade and at the same time, we're getting more good news and gold is coming off, which brings us to my first comment, which will be um, my comment that I'll make until the market does sell off, is that gold is going up because allocations are coming out for people to buy it. I'm not saying the allocations that are coming out aren't warranted because it's usually on the comment or advice that gold is going up. It's going to be a safe haven in 2019. The market's going to be volatile. Put your money in gold. All these reasons can have legitimacy to them. Nothing is black and white. But when you have all these reasons, there's a recession by gold. Uh, there's inflation by gold. Even if you have divergent reasons, 
and people are buying gold because whatever their hot button is, you know, a guy over 60 who's retired or retiring and is worried about his cash flow is going to maybe have a hot button of inflation. Oh, inflation. I remember that. I want to put some money into gold. Uh, a, a younger person who's never seen a recession can be more easily talked into, oh, we're going to have a recession. Uh, uh, you should buy gold. It, it, these are hot buttons of marketers. At the same time, they're also legitimate. They're legitimate possibilities. So you can't ignore them. What happens is funds, not funds, but banks put out recommendations and analysis on that. And people start to pile into gold. Before that happens, uh, and during when that happens, the banks buy for themselves. Perfectly legitimate to do that. Um, and also, uh, you also have the buyers of gold that are, let's call it big ticket retail, if you want to quote an old movie. Uh, those people are very are less price sensitive. They're just told to buy and they buy. And the VIG between the bid and ask that the dealer uh, gives them, meaning the bank acts as agent as opposed to principal, making a market for them gives them enough money because they're buying above the offer and selling below the bid if they have to get out. So all the drivers that are affecting gold, the various drivers that may be affecting gold boil down to one thing, more buy order flow as a result of more analysts telling you to buy order flow. So let's look at a couple of things that are potential headlines today. Uh, Trump is looking at using emergency powers for wall funding. Meaning the government is shut down. He's adamant on, uh, in a popular sort of way, getting some sort of, getting something for his negotiations on the wall. And he's using emergency powers. He is permitted to do that. Uh, but I have, I have, you know, that to me adds uncertainty to the market. Uh, it certainly doesn't add certainty. Uh, a president can declare emergency situation as they have done, uh, uh, you know, if they want to do a, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Not curfew, when a person, when, when they pull you off the street. Anyway, whatever that word is. Um, you'll, see, you'll see a lot of dictatorial nations do that. Uh, he can declare a state of emergency over, over a war. Uh, I think we've been in a state of emergency at any time, any given time, uh, whenever there's a, a, a home uh, terrorist threat. So if he declares a state of emergency and can then use executive powers to do that, he may, in fact, be able to do that, but that just creates more uncertainty now that he's at loggerheads with uh, a house that, if you've seen the interview with Pelosi and, uh, and uh, Schumer with him that, that hit the air, you won't see any more of those. But the bottom line there is that Pelosi and Schumer really played him good cop, bad cop, and he's in a weakened situation. So take a moment and look at that chart for one second, and I'm going to put up all the... colors again. Now, the colored sections are the GAN fan. We're not looking at those right now. They are important on a daily or hourly basis. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. What I do want to focus on is, for one second, is this blue line that I drew um, a couple days ago. Now, this blue line, it, it appears to be uh, random. Uh, but it isn't because I drew it off of a four-hour chart. In the four-hour chart, it should be more obvious. As soon as that comes up, you'll see it. Okay. On the four-hour chart, and this is a, a small thing, I connected, uh, I was looking to connect these but I decided I wanted to go further and I put it right here at a top to a bottom. Now, the reason I thought this was a significant line is because we had long wicks that had, that had touched it or penetrated. One, two, there's one that penetra touches it, penetrate, and it kept going up. This is actually why I got bearish last time, and uh, although I didn't put a trade on. And you can see what happened there on the four hour. That's the uh, hourly changing into the four hour. The market goes up to the line again, and now it failed. So this is, you know, my line, so to speak. And I think that this could be uh, the beginning of uh, a sell-off at the same time it could be constructive. You might want to start drawing trend lines lower now. All right. Why don't we go to uh, the technicals and we can read through those at the same time. So 
same time. Right, we're pulling up Moore's technical analysis. And while we're waiting for that to come up, I also want you to keep in mind that there was a big miss in German industrial production and trade talks apparently are going well. Trade talks going well. Trade talks going well should be bullish for gold, but they're not. I would not say that the trade talks are not going well, meaning uh, uh, that the market's not fading bad trade talks. I would say it's really simple that right now there's no buying in the market or no allocations have come out. So why don't we look at Michael's numbers and get a little bit of information here. Okay. Uh, starting from the area, it says I'm writing this from the lower call. Look for renewed intraday strength to come in above 1288 uh, to 1290 and a half. Okay. If we break above 1304, 1300 spot four, 10, or even just about 13 spot four and back below look for profit taking. So what he's what he's actually saying here is, is that uh, now that I've, you know, I've subscribed and, and been a user of his information for some time, is that if we get above 1304, which is now $15 away, okay, which probably comes in where one of those trend lines is that I have. You know, it's an upward sloping trend line that they're way below. That's why I say that the, the line is dissipated. If we get to that line, I would say that that line uh, that I drew before is actually a resistance line. And if we get there, it's probably a sign of exhaustion. Uh, I don't believe that the market can sustain itself in a short, in one day to get to that line. If we creep up over five or six days, that's an entirely different story. But from this level, we should be looking at different lines in that. But I do like this 1288 number, although it's not mine. Uh, uh, I'm going to keep an eye on it and I'll show you why in a second when we get to, it's 821 now, we're going to be ending at 825. I'm going to give you active trading levels. Okay, you should be considering uh, these numbers as repelling numbers, numbers where the market will reject them. 1288 to 1290, consider that, I consider that a dead zone. Uh, above 1290, consider getting long with a tight stop. Uh, this is, when I say consider, I'm not, you know, I'm saying what I'm considering. And what you should consider, what you should do is your decision. I'm going to consider getting long above 1290 and a half with a 1288 stop. And that means for me, it will probably be on an hourly. I'll also coincide with an hourly VBS system breakout, which we'll look for on the, on the other side. All right. On the downside, I'm writing this for a lower call. If we break below 1278 and back above, look for short covering to come in. Okay. If you remember, we had that long wick on the chart on the hourly, stop at about 1278. If we break below 1278 and back above, look for a short covering to come in. So what he's basically saying is, if we take out the recent low and reverse, then know that the buying that was there before that chased the market back up is still there. It's frequent that a, a, a market will make lows and then it'll make a new low to, to, if you want to look at the market as, if you want to anthropomorphize a market, it'll make a new low. Uh, uh, it'll test to see if the buying is there, the buying is there and it goes back up. So. My call before was 1276. So that number isn't relevant today, uh, but let's see what is relevant on my, if you see his numbers, you see his levels and you understand what he's talking about. All the stuff up top on a macro basis, on a short-term basis, pay attention to on a short-term basis, skip the first three lines because it's hard to translate if, you don't, if you're not a subscriber. All right, all right. However, where it starts is, however, this may now be in a corrective phase against that bull structure from 1236.50. This goes out to John and anyone else who's long gold. He's not taking the bull call off hold. I mean, he's not putting the bull call on hold. He is saying that we could have a healthy, corrective uh, move against the bull structure from 1236. Or we may have another run up to test above 1304. So before a more sizable correction. So he's saying lower gets you higher or higher gets you slammed lower. For me, that's a, that's a reason to take off half my position right now. Uh, uh, you want to risk the rest of it going out and sell the rest of it in the 1304 area. So, you know, you take off half your position now. This is what I would do if I had a position that I could do this with. Uh, well, I can do it with the macro position, just not micro. Take off half the position now and take off half of the remaining uh, at 1300 and put a trailing stop in. Or 
uh, put a trailing stop in underneath on the remaining half and see what happens. But you want to have bullets to be able to buy back in if uh, we drop down to 1276 and 1268, as he said. So that's pretty much it. Let me, let me end with the, the Bollinger Bands, okay? Because I think we have to look at them. There is something to trade on that today. We are at a ledge at a lower level, which is always a little bit scary. You see a couple lines there that are, that are acting as support. Anyone can draw lines to make them random. The only thing I want to focus on right now is this. All right. We don't have a lot of time. These bands are widening, not from a level that I would put a trade on, but you could put a trade on right now at 1280 uh, in spot gold. That puts it as 1281. And you would stop yourself out. at 1284. In fact, I'm considering doing that right now uh, uh, simply because it, it will be a swing trade on a macro trade I have. And if it turns out to be a winner, I'm just gonna let it run uh, because uh, there's no sense in, there's no sense in swing trading it back in if I have a bias lower right now. I think there's a lot of air between here and there. Uh, it is 825 and I have to give way to Larry um, for the AM roadmap, which I will be joining him for. And there'll be a lot to discuss, I'm sure. Keep in mind, uh, the market is not acting well on trade news. The dollar is strong and getting stronger uh, from weaker levels, but strong and getting stronger. And uh, anything that comes out of uh, the president's uh, Twitter account or verbally is uh, apt to move the market in ways unexpected. So have a good day. We have a lot of reports that we're going to be putting up over the next few days. All right. And... I'll give you a sample of those. All right, so we have BML market of capital, market capital. Report. We have an expiration outlook for Great Bear Resources. We have Great Bear uh, Hinge Zone, Goldman Sachs 2019 report, uh, Q1 2019 RBC mining metal ideas, and valuable gold report trading thoughts for December 30th, 2018, as well as some work I'm doing on a vol term arb, arb, arb whew, term structure arbitrage. Have a great day, and the numbers are. Short here with a 12, with a stop $3 higher, uh, or buy it above 1290, 1280, 1290. Cheers and be safe.